Welcome to Lovable, where you will discover what it takes to call in your soulmate and finally experience feeling seen, connected, and cherished. And in this series, you will learn practical tips and insights to help you find epic, lasting love. And I'm your host, Gina Daniels, and today I'm super excited to introduce you to Alison Armstrong. Alison Armstrong's exploration of human behavior began in 1991 with her decision to study men, to find out how she was bringing the worst out in them, and hopefully how to bring out the best. Her success in understanding men naturally led to studying women's behavior and making vital connections between the two. As her work devolved over the decades, Allison now illuminates human characteristics that proceed and express themselves regardless of gender, age, and upbringing. She distinguishes normal human instincts that compel both men and women to behave in ways that contradict and undermine our own purposes, goals, values, needs, and relationships. Besides fulfilling the need to understand why people behave as they do, Allison offers a practical partnership-based alternatives through her seminars, books, online programs, and media contributions. She has been giving millions of people access to more fulfilling lives, loving relationships, stronger families, and productive organizations. Allison is a sought after speaker, thought leader amongst people with the desire to live empowered lives. Her philosophy and approach are referred to and taught by other authors, speakers, business consultants, and therapists. I'm so excited to introduce you to Alison Armstrong. Alison, I am so excited to see you today. Uh, you, you have been uh, someone that I've admired for a long time. I just mm -hmm. want to let you know that. Mm, thank you. Thank you. And today we're going to be talking about a lot. We're going to be talking about like understanding men more and how to feel seen and cherished. Love it too. Beautiful. So Allison, if sort of just, just diving right there into the pool, like what do you, what do you <laughs> wish women knew about men? Oh, golly. There, oh my gosh. Okay. Talk about a huge question. <laughs> but in this context, um, what I wish, what I wish women knew about men is that just like women, just like young people, we're a duality, right? So we're a duality of human instincts and very compelling drives and perceptions of threats and opportunities and some quite primitive fight, flight, and freeze responses um, were that. And what when I was asking about soulmate, what do you mean by soulmate? We're, we also have a completely separate nervous system that mm -hmm. I call human spirit. And it's what we access when we stop and take a deep breath, right? We literally switch nervous systems. Um, all kinds of exercises to do that, which are so valuable. And at the level of human spirit, the soulmate or connecting in a higher consciousness or at a spiritual level, mm -hmm. that's not hard, right? When we're in that, that aspect of our being, connecting at that level, it is pretty easy and even abundant, Right. Um, and then there's, okay, so there's someone we connect in a spiritual way. Now, when we translate into we're having this very human experience with a bunch of circumstances, right? And as some and things that everybody needs and things that we in particular need. So connecting at the spiritual level which is what happened to me and my boyfriend and me and my husband. <laughs> right. um, then how do you translate that into, okay, we have this amazing connection. Now, how do I get what I need in this ex human experience, including feeling like what I'm giving you 
right, is right. special. That's part of being cherished is they're in awe of who we can be for them, right? Mm -hmm. But we have to do it without betraying ourselves. So how do we make sure that this, yes, you have a spiritual connection, but when you we translate it into this experience, can we both get what we need and can we both give what we need? Which is a whole aspect of cherished, right? That you get right. to give, that you get to give what you most need to give. We all need to give. But what do you what do you need to give? And is it appreciated? Is it admired? Right. And um, and it's interesting because in, at the level of human spirit, men and women. There's no men and women, right? There's no right. gender at that level. Mm. And yet in this human experience with these intense gender hormones, <laughs> <laughs> um, mm -hmm. testosterone and estrogen and oxytocin and progesterone I mean, they have these huge impacts on this and so the thing I would want women to know in that is men men already love women mm -hmm. they they really do they they love us and they're very sensitive to us they're very vulnerable to us and and they're vulnerable to us in that we can overpower them with sexual attraction. Mm -hmm. Like if they're very sexually attracted to us, they we're going to bring out the most primitive aspects of them. We're going to get the worst of them. So the more we appeal mm -hmm. to sexual attraction, which instinctually and culturally we're taught to do, right? Mm -hmm. um, the more we're going to get the worst in men. <laughs> mm -hmm. And the more the more sensitive they're going to be to yes, but does she respect me? Right. They, they, we bring out the worst by having them feel not respected. And if we don't trust them, if you don't trust me, then you don't respect me, but we mostly don't trust men and we don't trust men. I assert, <laughs> I warned you, I can't give a short answer. <laughs> we don't, I assert we don't trust men because one, as human beings, we want to be able to have blanket trust. Yeah. We we just want to. We want the, it's a it's a fairy tale. It's a hallucination that well, I can just trust you. I can just always trust you to do what's best for me. I always trust you, you know, to what's in my highest interest. I always trust you to respond to me with sensitivity. I, we want we want to just blanket trust people. And it's it sets us up especially to try to trust men to act like women. Mm -hmm. And then when they don't act like women and we try to hold them to account for that, they should have acted like a woman and they won't be held to account for that. Right. And the man who will be and tries to contort himself to act like a woman, we don't want him anymore because we sense the weakness oh. So when they won't be held to account for acting like a woman, we think they won't be held to account for anything. Right. And that you can't trust them. But when you go, you know, I started studying men in 1991 to find out how he's bringing out the worst in them, <laughs> which is basically <laughs> what I just described. And I would punish them for not acting like a woman because clearly they're misbehaving. And when I went to figure out well so how are men responding to women that was my first question what if men are responding to women yeah. and then years later what if there's a good reason for what they do like <laughs> which started out with plausible what if there's a plausible reason <laughs> but these these questions are put in my head yeah. right I used to think I thought them but no, definitely put in my head. And so when I started exploring, what if there's a good reason for that? I found exactly that. I found good reasons. Like re they have such good intentions when they're not threatened. And even when they are threatened, they'll still try to protect us from them. Right. So they have these really good reasons. Mm -hmm. And then on to what if no one's misbehaving? Right. Including, including me. Wait, when I do, when I'm a human girl, uh, I, 
I, I need compassion for being a human girl, right? Not, I beat up myself enough. (laughs) So I need, so one of the things I love about my boyfriend, I love about my husband, they both had compassion for human girl moments when, you know, the rage monster, for example, (laughs) right? Or taking things personally that to them is just insane. Like, that is so nothing to do with you. And yet you insist on taking that personally. <laughs> and then and then they know when they are responding to us, but we're treating them like they're broken instead of, but I was reacting to you. <laughs> Why am I broken? <laughs> when I was reacting to your way of treating me, which was not cherished, right? Right. So, The bad news is we're very different and there's so much to learn. The good news is that it's, it's worth finding out and it's worth learning. And then the, like, if you think of it like this, Mm -hmm. right? Like we, we have opposing instincts or bashing, bashing, bashing together. Well, if we just like make these tiny adjustments, right? Just these tiny adjustments, then we can have that thing we're looking for that union that partnership that adoring and be adored but if we don't know the adjustments like for example transition time i don't know how much of my work you've studied but most men are focused testosterone causes a committed state of mind Mm -hmm. and they need transition time to shift from committed to one thing over to committed to another thing like committed to getting you to dinner, <laughs> getting okay. the table, getting seated, getting ordered to now I can get to know you. <laughs> you. And and we're trying to have them get to know us while they're driving us to dinner, right? Or while they're trying to get a table. We're trying to connect and be seen when they can't. They can't see. Their brain is filtering out everything irrelevant to the first result to produce. Gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, like, so no, knowing when a man is in a transition time and therefore don't try to connect with him, or he's focused on something other than seeing you, hearing you. That's the thing we don't know. They can't see and hear us when they're not focused on seeing and hearing us. Right. But we're trying to force <laughs> them into the female mode. Yes. Because we're that way. Yeah, we have the effects of estrogen on our brain, right? So diffuse awareness mm-hmm. where the amount of input is stunning and we get overwhelmed, which is why we need to, I call it empty your basket. We need to, blah, 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 and I thought this and I felt this and I saw this and yes, yes, yes. And until You're we talk about that, me here, Allison, <laughs> I'm a younger girl and and even though when we get past menopause, right, which for me was at 49, I think. So I'm way past menopause. I was, I was teasing my boyfriend about yesterday. I was we're talking about something I was late for. And it, and then and then we he, we read our each other's minds a lot. And he's like, Well, as long as it's not menstruation we're talking about. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, it's been my period's 14 years late. And he's like, wow, that's going to be some baby. And I'm like, yeah, and it won't be yours because I didn't know you then. <laughs> Anyhow, so transition time is one thing um, that makes a huge difference. If we just wait until we have their attention, it's amazing. Or uh, we teach something called waiting for the well, right? So you can learn from the Queen's Code, um, you know, which is now an audiobook, And... And waiting for the well is because when we ask them a question, we got to make sure we're committed to the question. He's transitioning to committed himself to the question and the answer. And then he's going hunting for the answer and he's going to give you the best answer he can. They're always trying to perform for us, to provide for us. And we usually will state a question. They don't answer fast enough. We restate it, which makes it a different question. They don't answer that fast enough. So then we give them multiple choice, which has them know we don't really want to know what they think. (laughs) Right. 
right? So just waiting, ask a question. I, I recommend count to 30. Most yeah. answers will show up about 18, unless it's about a feeling or an emotion that could take, that could take days. Okay. <laughs> and this is beautiful stuff because when women get on dates, they want to fire off those questions, right? Yeah, men call it interrogating. <laughs> the flashlight goes on. <laughs> yeah, the, yeah, the deer in headlights, they call it interrogated. Um, I've done research on, like, for women to feel cherished, we first have to feel connected. Mm -hmm. And there's connection at the spiritual level, and there's connection it, as a herd animal. Okay. Right. And when we feel connected, like you're interested in me in a good way, you're paying attention to me in a good way. Now we can connect. I have a chance of being seen and, and how I'll know to do that is, is that you're expressing interest by your asking me questions and but men don't like to be asked questions. Their favorite question is no question. And so I teach men to find out what women's favorite questions are, mm -hmm. to ask them. And then women, instead of asking questions, I call it a playground. Okay. Offer him a playground. Like, however you were set up, right? Dan and I were set up by a student of mine. A lot of people are set up by liking each other in some dating app. So wherever, whatever someone told you about this person, say, do you know, I only know a few things about you. And I would, any of these that you'd like to more say, say more about, I'd be interested in. You pick, do you know, how did you end up being an accountant? What's it like being from <laughs> Southern Oregon? I'm thinking of my husband now. Um, <laughs> I, I think. I saw a picture of you on a motorcycle. So love to hear about motorcycles and motorcycling. Like, so any little bit, you know, like if you'd like to say anything more about that, I'm interested. And like for my, my son, I was talking to him about this a couple of weeks ago, he's 34. And I said, do you know, I'm interested in anything you're interested in? Because yes, I do oh. know that. <laughs> And so with him, it's just like, is there anything you want me to know about you? And then imaginary duct tape. And I wait. One time I waited three days because <laughs> he was working. And then we got on a bus. He took a nap. And he then he talked to me for like three hours. He answered the question. Yeah. So little adjustments when we know you and I are going to converse in a blah, 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 oh, me too. Oh, but what about kind of way? <laughs> no, that's like running a train off the track. And when they're speaking, if we interrupt them with a, oh, I agree or, oh, but what about? They just feel disrespected. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. That's a really good point. Right. Cause as, as women, sometimes we're, our brains already got the next thing we're ready to fire off with. Right. <laughs> Yeah, which is why I encourage, like, think of, if you are going to ask a question or and you are going to ask a playground, mm -hmm. you know, provide a playground, commit to it before you ask them to commit because they can't not commit. Right. They, 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 it's their natural way of being is a committed state of mind unless they're what I call at play. When they have no results to produce, nothing they're accountable for, nothing they think is theirs to provide, then they can be at play and then they can zig and zag all kinds of ways because they're literally in a different consciousness themselves. Gotcha. But it's... Um, Dan, my boyfriend, is at play a lot mm -hmm. but it took me a while to recognize that he's focused now <laughs> okay because i get a completely different response and i think he didn't like me anymore gotcha gotcha so if women are looking to get into sort of committed relationships 
how do they know you know is this guy in a committed zone is he at play with me like is there a way of telling those things Okay, we already had four huge things, right? Lovable, seen, <laughs> connect, we'll one cherish, and now you're adding committee. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, we had soulmate too. Okay, so let me put it this way. Commitment for men is like calculus. So you got to have first math, Addition, abstraction, subtraction, multiple division, then algebra, then trig, then calculus. So, so it takes a, we have a whole thing called understanding love and commitment, right? We have a whole online course. Um, but a couple of things, M men can only commit to things they think they can win at. Mm. They don't, they don't wing commitment as women we have so many instincts compelling us to bond mm -hmm. that commitment makes us feel safe in a very primitive way, mm -hmm. except for what it causes us to do is commit to people who can't give us what we need. Mm -hmm. So now we're tortured, <laughs> yeah. Right. We're we're going without what we need, which brings out the worst in us. But we've said till death do us part or, you know, I'm in it forever. And. And so there's a lot I've learned from men where and this is actually really good news. So. Somewhere between 30 seconds and three minutes, mm -hmm. <laughs> a man knows who a woman can be for him. Wow. Yeah. Who she could be for him. Like they know that fast. Is this someone, that, you know, is this just a passing introduction? Is this a, you know, a chemical connection we should hook up? Is this someone that I'd like to have in my life as a friend? I'd like to help them or I think they can help me. Or is this, oh boy, she's special. <laughs> Whoa, she, she could be that. And the way that I think of it, Gina, is um, if you ever did a puzzle and you didn't have a picture, right? Mm -hmm. Usually we start with the edge pieces. Yeah. We try to find out what is the scope of what we're dealing with here, right? Mm -hmm. So men will see the edge pieces in 30 seconds to three minutes. Wow. They know that fast. They're that perceptive. And it, but then is there like, okay, so we got to see how this fills in. Does mm -hmm. the picture fill in? And what they're looking for is, can I give her what she needs? Mm -hmm. And can she give me what I need? Right. That's what they're looking for. And so if we're not telling them what we need, then they can't figure out, can they give it to us? <laughs> right. <laughs> so the clearer we are about what we need, which often we don't even, we don't have that clarity. Yeah. And something your audience may want to try on our website is called Thrive Your Life. And it's how to get the degree of clarity that really makes a difference. And how do you know that you got it? Oh. Right, there's certain characteristics that have you know, I got it, and what clarity does when when a man or a woman has clarity, we we become a magnet for what we're clear about, mm -hmm. and so if we're not clear, we're we're like a a magnet that has a it's all fuzzy, right? It's not yeah. going to attract what it is that we really want because we're not clear about what we really want. And then we have something on our website called Own Your Ultimatums, mm -hmm. which proposes that when you know what you won't live with and you won't live without it, mm -hmm. that you represent that early and often. Mm -hmm. Because... Okay. 
will betray what we need the most mm. depending on our attraction to another person. Chemistry makes men and women both really stupid. <laughs> <laughs> we, we will, oh my gosh, we'll, besides it bringing out the worst in us, like men causing chemistry for women, you're going to get the worst out of women and you're going to think it's women. No, it's because of what you're doing to get them to react to you sexually, which is the most primitive, right? And women who appeal to men that way are going to think that men are dogs, that they're terrible and they don't care. But we appeal to the part of them that doesn't care. We didn't appeal to their heart. We didn't appeal to their spirit. We appear appealed to their most primitive instinct to procreate. So if we, this this is the good news, when we're clear about what we're committed to, and we're not going to live without it, gotcha. and we represent it early, I mean, really early, Gina, like, really? re, like uh, so on my list, <laughs> I have 19 qualities on my list that a person must be and generate being if they're going to play with me in life. Wow. And then I have another 23 <laughs> specific behaviors and attitudes towards different parts of life. Right. And one of the things on my list <laughs> is that they can be with, they're, they're big enough consciously to be with the freaky parts of my life. Gotcha. Because I have a lot of, freaky parts of my life, right? The keys, the kingdom and the queen's code. I didn't write them. I typed them. I watched movies and typed as fast as I could. It, it took between those two books. It took five, five weeks, wow. <laughs> eight days I for keys. Of the king. Yeah. Eight days for keys, of the kingdom and three weeks for the queen's code. Cause I was just watching a movie and typing as fast as I could. It's like these people well, live in another dimension. Yeah. Yeah. So can they be with that? Or I'll ask a question like, so what am I supposed to do next? And then I'm given an answer and I work on it for two years, three years, five years, 10 years. Right. Or like when Dan and I first talked on the phone, I asked him in very soon, like in the first five minutes, um, did Valerie tell you that I'm a widow? Valerie was who said it that's up and he said he said yes she did and I'm very sorry for your loss and he paused and I received that and and I said thank you and then I said well something you should know is that my husband is a very big part of my life and he probably picked you beautiful <laughs> and there's this silence right there's this silence and I'm thinking in my head if you're gonna run run now. <laughs> yeah. So I didn't wait to get to know him better to tell him something very important about me that yeah. might cause him to reject me. I want him to reject me for my truth before I care whether or not he rejects oh, me. I love this. <laughs> right? Yes. Tell them your truths before you, before you're, before you care more about what they think than being loyal to your truth. Yeah. When your truth is most important to you, that's when to tell it. Yeah. And then, and there's so many things I told Dan in the first three hours that we spoke that week. Um, there's so many things I told him that it was like, okay, and if you're going to run, run now. <laughs> and if you're going to run, run now. And just like, so that he could sort himself out right. before I was trying to hang on to him. Mm, love it. Being so authentic yes. before investing a crap load of time and then becoming authentic. Yes. And here's the good news, Gina. Clarity will give you confidence, right? Confidence means with faith. So when you have clarity about yourself and your deal breakers and that you're going to be loyal to them, you have confidence. You interact confidently. That is the most attractive quality in a woman. The most. It has men care about you, has them want to contribute to you, has them want to give you what you need, has them fall in love, that 
it's perceived as a tremendous strength, which men instinctually are looking for the strongest, most competent woman that they can attract and keep. Mm. So an attraction keep, meaning that she sees something in me too, and I can give her what she needs, right? So this all comes together. And then second to confidence is authenticity. Yeah. And as you can see, only when we have faith in ourselves, will we be authentic? Will we be real? Mm. Right. Mm. And then the third most attractive quality is passion. What are you passionate about? Which is why I encourage people to connect. The problem is when we're first getting to know people, we try to connect over the past. Yeah, The past is safe, right? You can't reject my past, right? But whatever we're passionate about in our past, a man's going to be listening to it. Can I give her that? Mm. Right? So if we're passionate about the travel that we did, He's thinking, can I afford to travel that much? <laughs> can I afford to pay for her to travel that much? Right? So if we connect instead over what's most relevant in a new relationship, which is the future, mm. what are you passionate about for your future? What are you committed to for your future? What, what are you looking for? If you're going to be part of my life, you would you would need to want something like this to be part of your life right what, whatever it is yeah and that's so that's the third most attractive quality i've done a lot of work on this one mm. it's in a book called making sense of men which i encourage for men to read too because then they'll understand why they react the way they do to some women the fourth most attractive quality, and this is the kicker, Gina, and this is that cherished um, part of a man cherishing a woman is him feeling seen and mm. gotten and liked and admired by her. Right. Right. So we work so much on how they're going to feel about us. Yeah. We don't realize how much how we are with them matters yeah. and so the fourth most attractive quality in a woman without which the whole thing falls apart yeah. is receptivity right. so us being receptive to who who are you who are you what do you need what do you care about and it's so like an owner ultimatums we talk about not only speaking your own ultimatums but how to listen in a way that when someone doesn't intend to reveal themselves mm -hmm. <laughs> in dating, most people are only revealing what they think is attractive, yep. but you can listen in a way that you'll hear where their, their deal breakers are. Oh, he's talking about his children. They're really important to him. He's talking about the time he spends with his children. They're really important to him. Oh, Okay, they're going to be a priority. They may be the first priority. Can I support that? Am I cool with that? My answer is yes. I do not want to be a man's first priority. <laughs> it's suffocating to be a first priority. They have way too much to give and way too intense of an attention. <laughs> please, please, I need, a, I need a lot of alone time. I don't want to be a first priority. Um, but receptive to who they are, receptive to their expression of their caring for us. They're, if we keep saying, no, I can do that myself. No, I can do that myself. No, I can do that myself. They're left with, well, I guess you don't need me. Mm. I, I'm going to find someone who needs me because yeah. men are such providers. They're such givers. And if you don't need what they have, they're like, I'm going to go do something else. Gotcha. Right. But you can see, Gina, how we, you know, I was born in 1960. So I grew up with a, <laughs> I had a conflict between Barbie dolls and feminism, <laughs> which ended up with, okay, as a woman, you must have a man. Yeah. And never need him. <laughs> left with right yeah. <laughs> you have to have one but don't need him and make sure he knows you don't need him 
(laughs) (laughs) That's so true. (laughs) Yeah. And I'm glad you're getting it because part of the hope that I've gotten out of studying men and then women and then what's human, not men or women, um, like our course called Lux is about it's not about gender. It's about men and women and the three things I think we can control in relationships. And it in studying all this, it's actually such a relief from the what's wrong with me question, which most women are plagued by and men are from time to time. Um, there's nothing wrong with me. It, I, I was born human. I incarnated human. <laughs> Next time, maybe a sea turtle or a dolphin. <laughs> or when I was a child, I wanted to be reborn a horse. Oh. Somehow I always knew we were reincarnated. I wanted to come back as a horse. Um, but we have human instincts and they're herd instincts. They're pack instincts because we're both prey and predator. So we have both, which makes us really complicated. <laughs> sure. But it's just, it's not personal. There's nothing wrong with this. We just all have to learn how to deal with being spiritual beings in a human experience. So true, right? And I think there's so many lessons, spiritual lessons around love too. Oh gosh, yes. Yeah. Oh gosh. Oh my gosh. Can I tell you one of my favorite things I did about that? Yes, please. I, um... I came very late, one might say, to meditation. Okay. And it's because of Dan. He meditates. And and I I (laughs) I got really attracted to my mind being quiet instead of thinking all the time. Mm -hmm. And so I wanted to create a mantra. And um in Sanskrit, because there's something about that different language that doesn't have all the baggage. Do you know? And so I started looking up words in Sanskrit and I looked up the word love. And I found this article. I wish I could remember who wrote it. He's a beautiful writer. And it's about the five um the five aspects or expressions of love that have been studied in India for over 3000 years. And so there's all these different words for love and for different kinds of love, including the love called Altma Prema, which is we're one. I love you as myself because there's no distinction, right? But then there's, you know, Kama, which most people think is sex. And it actually means of the senses, mm. right? Which sensuality is is one of the most sexually attractive qualities in a woman, mm-hmm. which we only need a little, we know I think we need a little bit of sexual energy, a little bit of sensuality for a man to go, okay, this will work. <laughs> Otherwise we overpower them. Right. Which I used to do on purpose, by the way, because I could sense they were off balance and therefore weakened and therefore they couldn't attack me. Mm. So I was always in a way attacking ever since I was about 16, I would attack men mm. both preemptorily. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Hand me your testicles and then we'll talk. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So what if we weren't afraid of men? Mm. What if we had boundaries that when we had the first inkling, this person wasn't up to good for me, that we set them and enforced them and we didn't betray them because he's so handsome or he's so rich or he's so everything on my list. No, this doesn't feel right. Ew. I'm always left diminished by being with this person. I'm done. (laughs) Yeah. Can I tell you one more thing? Please do. For men and for women, if you want to know, could this be something fulfilling? Mm -hmm. Early on, 
tell the other person something you need. Mm. Something real that you need. Like when Valerie said, I want to introduce you to this person I said okay have him email me to set up a time to talk mm -hmm. he emailed me to set up a time to talk right. <laughs> okay a he follows instructions <laughs> <laughs> one of the things off your list <laughs> if people don't follow instructions it's a nightmare b he honored what I said I needed yeah. exactly what I said I needed he he honored that and whether it's before I meet you in person, like you're maybe doing a dating app before we meet in person, um, I need to talk to you on the phone mm -hmm. and, and make sure that we're not going to waste each other's time or break each other's heart, that this actually has a chance of being a feat. If they blow that off, that is a very bad indicator on the part of a man or woman, they're saying, I don't care what you need. I don't care what you want. I'm going to overrule it by what I want. And I, no, 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 no. I don't like to talk on the phone. Let's just get together. Mm. Seriously, you don't like to talk on the phone? So that means we're only going to communicate when we see each other? <laughs> yeah. That's not going to work. <laughs> I need more connection than that. So whatever it is, whether it's I need to be home by 10 or I can't talk to you till next Tuesday or I need to make sure that you read this part of my profile because seriously I am an orthodox Jew mm -hmm. <laughs> and if you don't understand what that means you need to because it would be a lot of adaptation on your part no 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 let's just meet Okay, this is just somebody who's reacted to the picture. She or he would be fun to go to bed with. I just want to get in physically in their presence because if you can get in someone's physical presence, that's a lot easier to get in their pants. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <Pretty sure. laughs> I don't want to waste my time on the phone. Really? On yeah. the phone is a waste of time for you? Yeah. And I'm not. I have nothing against, or I don't moralize about hookups. Right. If we're, but m most people don't know how many people are using dating apps just purely to hook up. They're mm -hmm. not actually looking for a relationship. And you can, and even if they are looking for a relationship, if you're leading with sex and sexuality, that could displace. Mm -hmm how they would behave with someone who is being confident and authentic and passionate and receptive who that man is you literally can get two completely different men because of what we're appealing to right yeah that's that's just so important right what are you leading with what are you leading with i would suggest lead with what matters to you and pay very close attention to how they relate to it yeah yeah. And if you do those things that you're saying, Allison, you'll, you'll cross people off the list before it's a big deal, before you've invested your energy, time, heart, everything. Yeah. And, and it's why I asked about the soulmate thing, because what if at the level of souls and human spirit, there are soulmates? Yeah. There's so, there's an abundance of people we can connect with that way. Yes. So don't glom onto it. Don't attach yourself to it. Yay, we have that connection. Dan and I did. This is maybe 45 minutes into the conversation. He, he said, I, I I love people and I love me and I love you. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, and I love you too. Aww. Now let's find out if this fits. Right. So if there's there's an abundance of love. Yeah. What's more difficult is fit. Do we fit? Can we give each other what we need? Mm -hmm. And and so look for that connection. If you're not feeling it, let it go. If you are feeling it, then pursue fit. And fit's going to start with, will they honor what I say is important to me? Or are they going to think they know better? Mm -hmm. Both men and women think they know better about the other person, what they really need. And we disrespect what they say they need. Right, 
Yeah. And you can pretty much when someone's like that with you, that's what's to come with your relationship too. that whole aura, the way they're showing up. Not pretty much. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> this is a preview of the rest of your life. That's to and, your life. Absolutely. Yeah. And that it's one of the things that we talk about in Lux, which stands for liberation, understanding external relationships, is that we have a, too much faith in change. Mm. We think that once they know me better, they'll be more caring towards me. No, if they're not being caring now, they're not going to become more caring. <laughs> Seriously, my first husband, I thought the minister had fairy dust. Aww. And when he said, I do, he would turn into a husband. When he behaved not at all like a husband, mm. he just didn't care. <laughs> It was that he wanted to get married. It was a time in his life to get married. I was someone who was it, admired by his, the people whose opinions he trusted, which were his male friends. When they found out that I'd asked him out, they thought that was awesome. His mentor said, that makes my heart sing. So he's third date. He asked me to marry him. Oh, yeah. But he never cared in a way that would bring husbanding out of him mm. do you know animal husbandry it's all about taking care <laughs> mm. so that's why we've got to check for that early on does this person care what i need yeah and we won't know unless we express it and find out how they react to it yeah beautiful have that have that bravery of soul of heart to just be you Yes, which is what men say, by the way, they about their attraction to women in the way that they fall in love with them is um, to have the courage to be authentic, yeah. to have the courage to be real. And it also matters in that commitment realm, Gina, because mm -hmm. when we're not real, men know it. Mm. They know it 100% of the time, even when they're distracted by sexual attraction they still know that there's a bunch of pretense here <laughs> mm -hmm. and and where there's pretense they know they can't trust mm. i can't trust this person because they're not real i yeah. don't know what i'm really interacting with right and so i don't know what i'd be signing up for uh, yeah what one man said to me, he goes, I know we have no future. I have no future with her. And I said, why? He says, because she has no voice. Wow. Yeah. She doesn't have her own voice, which means she doesn't know who she is yet, which if she doesn't know who she is, I don't know who she is. So why would I sign up for that? Yeah. Wow. It's one of the things men love about older women. Yeah. Yeah, because especially as we get past child, childbearing age, we're so much more clear about who we are yes. and much more direct about it. Yeah. And they find that in just enchanting and comforting. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and it, okay, it's safe. And even if we're not a right fit for them, yeah. they'll be like, I know somebody for you. <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh yeah, I'm not right for you, but I know somebody who is. <laughs> They'll be like your matchmakers. <laughs> yeah. Beautiful. Awesome. So Allison, tell me what's happening in your world and and maybe some of the things that you want to highlight, what you're doing right now. Oh, thank you. Um, well, it's perfect that you invited me to be here because this whole first part of the year for me is about in powering singles mm -hmm. and um and for me i'm all about empowerment mm -hmm. and i hate that how most people relate to being single which is often like it's something to get rid of <laughs> it's something to cure it's something to escape right and but the whole process is disempowering we become diminished by it Mm -hmm. unless we're doing the things we just talked about if you're 
practicing clarity and flying your flag, you'll get stronger and stronger and stronger. And I encourage my smart single students to treat every interaction like it's going to the gym and I'm building the muscle of being true to myself. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no matter whether it's in line getting a cup of coffee or it's a date that's set up or whatever it is, I'm practicing being true to myself. And so I love all that. And then I um, I recorded the audiobook of The Queen's Code and it's, it's so much more intense for people than reading the book because it's, I found out, it, which I should have known, but I was aghast when I realized it, that as people were reading the book to themselves, it was going through their filters, mm. right? Their filters of whatever the intensity or the emotion, for example, was for that. And a woman told me, that when she read The Queen's Code to herself about 10 years ago, she didn't read the men's parts, right? Because it's fiction and there's four men with as much emotion and sincerity as I do. And she realized because she was prejudiced that men would never be that way. Right. Yeah. So The Queen's Code audiobook, um, I've done it twice now where I, I call it your Queen's Code journey of answering the questions of the people chapter by chapter as they're listening to the book. And it's a wild ride for people. I mean, I, I started doing everything that I did in order to be able to write that book and to transform the way women relate to men and to themselves. And it, it, ha- it works, <laughs> but I didn't write it, so I'm not going to take credit for that, (laughs) but it works and everything in it is validated by decades of study. And it's also helping men to transform their relationship to themselves Mm -hmm. because they're finding out they have good reasons for what they do Mm -hmm. and no longer allowing themselves to be denigrated Mm -hmm. for why they do what they do, because it's a different motivation than a woman would have. So I'm passionate about the Queen's Code audiobook. I'm passionate about empowering singles. <laughs> Next summer, I'm going to take on a whole series for couples. <laughs> nice. Nice. Yeah, I'm going to do a webinar on fighting. Um, <laughs> what's worth fighting for? And how could we fight for freedom, right? And fight in a way that we end up better off for it. Um, yeah, I'm at the stage in my life, Gina, where I... Uh, I'm very, I don't have anything to prove. Yeah. Right. I don't, I, I don't have anything undone, like ambitions that I have to fulfill, um, which makes me really hard to manipulate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, my children are, they're launched and there's, I mean, I've always been in awe of them. I'm especially in awe of them now the adults that they are. It's stunning to me. Um, So I just, I get to play and I get to play with contributing to people. And especially since I really was was the very worst when I started. Mm -hmm. I hated men. I was terrified of them. I hated them. I questioned if they had souls. I knew they didn't have any feelings. So it didn't matter what I did to them. I couldn't hurt them. I mean, I couldn't have been further from who they are, but I also was in despair because I, I was supposed to have one. (laughs) I have to have one. Right. Mm -hmm. And I also had this sense of, of union that we really could be united. I just had no way to get at it. Yeah. You didn't know, you didn't know the journey yet. I didn't know. And then when my husband died, which was, completely a shock. And I became single again after almost three decades. Mm-hmm. I I had to, and I got to relearn everything all over again as, as a single person. Once I realized I did want to have a relationship again, I had to re- revisit everything. So it's, it's very fresh for me. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. 
So just talking about that audiobook, is it would it be your website, alisonarmstrong.com, that people should go to get it or yeah, it's the only place you can get it. Okay. Um you listen to it on our new mobile app along with a bunch of other stuff. Um, but I haven't released it to like Audible, for example. Mm-hmm. Um it's it's just it's just there on our website. Perfect. Well, I will be getting a copy of it. I just want to let oh, you know that <laughs> you'll yeah. be on my walks with me. <laughs> oh, awesome. Um, bring tissues. Okay. <laughs> I will do that. <laughs> uh, well, Allison, it's been so amazing to have you here today. You just have such a wealth of knowledge and and know so much about men and the insights of men. It's just, I love it. I love everything that you've talked about. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Yes, it's my honor, honestly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. And thank you, everybody, for joining us today for another episode of Lovable. And we'll see you again soon. Bye for now.